Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Mastering Impact. My name is Catherine Tanaka, fitness, functional nutrition, and mindset coach, co-hosting tonight with the lovely Kira Day, founder of the Passion Center and Passion Health Expert extraordinaire. So we are welcoming you back into tonight's conversation, our Mastering Impact series, our series specifically on transformation and sharing our proven, proven methodologies of how we transform the lives of our personal clients. You know, transformation, as Kira and I discuss so often in life, is something that often we want in our careers, in our health, in our fitness, whatever it may be. And sometimes it feels completely elusive. We don't know where to start. We don't know how to move through it. And we don't know how to find sustainable change. So we are sharing with you over the next several episodes, our secret playbook of continuous transformation, how we get our clients from point A all the way through the transformation point, but beyond, right? Because we all know sometimes, especially in the health and fitness world, people relapse and probably the same in career. So we are going to share with you exactly how to get unstuck and have continuous transformation. So if you remember from our last episode, we spoke on the first principle that is pain and discomfort. This is often the catalyst that elicits change. But tonight we're going to dive deep into the second principle that is really important. It's discovery. And what Kira and I really want to impart to you tonight is that this principle of discovery is a critical piece of transformation. So grab your cup of tea, turn off your ringer of your phone, get cozy with us. This is going to be an intense, juicy conversation. Oh my God, I'm excited for this one, Catherine. And for you guys that are listening in or in the chats, feel free to let us know where you're from, where you're dialing in. We know that there's a lot of experts listening to us tonight. So if you wanna drop your wisdom, the chat is yours. Or if you just wanna be in the background and listen, you're still gonna get a ton of value. So I'm not sure the tech's been a little bit weird. So I'm not sure who's popping in or popping out, but as soon as it catches up, we'll be ready to greet you. So let's kick this off. Like Catherine just um, alluded to, we had done our last episode a few weeks back on pain as being the first symptom on the path to transformation. Pain being the catalyst where oftentimes we are feeling the discomfort and we are feeling the tension and that tension causes us to really try to navigate a little deeper with ourselves and with our situations. Now, I'm sure you all know because we're a part of the same kind of culture, but we have a lot of emphasis on development in our society. But here's the thing, we can't develop what we first don't discover. So tonight we're gonna be going through the three areas that you need to be looking at when we come in to the discovery conversation. Hey, Ashif, I see you. Thank you for coming in, my fellow Torontonian. <laughs> so the whole art of getting into this conversation is to understand that there's three layers that we're gonna address. Each layer is foundational to the next. So you're gonna wanna keep on the train as we navigate this track. Um, and going back to just this idea of going into development, why have we built a society that's based on professional development, um, you know, personal development? We are obsessed with development, but we are not as great as going through the discovery journey. And it's very true to our natures where we like to get into action pretty quickly on things, especially when there's discomfort. We all have a tendency to manage our internal anxiety through fixating on external activity. And here's where we get in trouble. So today or tonight, we don't want to uh, create the traps. We want to allow ourselves an opportunity to really move into this and explore. So Catherine, do we want to kick off with our first area to unpack on the conversation of discovery? Yeah, but let's let's frame this out a little bit for everyone. So discovery is really that space that you want to become aware of that is kind of like Kira was saying that keep like 
gets in the way, right? It's these mindset patterns and the habits that are what Kira calls hidden drivers. It's kind of like that cycle that we fall back into that often is a big roadblock in transformation. Those things that, you know, those subconscious patterns or habits that often bring us back, right? And in the context of health and well-being, these are like the mindset patterns that self-sabotage that shows off, those belief systems and the daily program that is automated, that sometimes we kind of can fast forward over for a short period of time, but most often it creeps back in. And, you know, Kira and I, we we do a lot of work behind the scenes when we prep these conversations for you guys, because we really want to bring you the best of what we've got. And in the discussion we spoke about today and last week and the week before, we were talking about how this is like building a house right? Everyone wants to get to like the juicy part of decorating the house of like, you know, choosing all the fixtures and the lights and the, you know, wallpaper. But the foundation is what makes a house sturdy and lifelong lasting, right? And so this is what we're talking about today, still foundational principles in transformation. So yeah, let's get into the first step of understanding what keeps us stuck, right? Mm -hmm. This is why I focus so much in mindset in my transformation programs. And this is why you focus so much on subconscious patternings and all the things that you do with your passion health tests. This is really asking yourself, what is your relationship with yourself? Whether it's your body, with your relationships, with your career, with passion, with attaining your goal, right? This is the first layer of, what keeps us in that stuckness, that pattern that we need to really discover, mm. right? So the first step in the three-step process that we're going to take you through is really uncovering those layers. So yes. let's, take a, let's, let's go a little bit deep into what we mean by that. Now, I can give you a tangible example. In my world, it's all about working with folks through that what we like to call that mid-career crisis, where they realize what they've invested in for so long is not the thing that they're connected to anymore. And often that can be a very challenging and confronting place to be. Now, I experience it in my world with folks that are on career journeys where they are just not loving it anymore. But we as humans experience this in various phases in our life. It could be in a relationship. It could be with the body that we've evolved and we're not liking where it's going, right? As in Catherine's case. And so sometimes we want to go into action, get into it right away, kind of like what we were talking about in the beginning. But here's where we um, can get into trouble. If we move into action too fast, then we're carrying a whole bunch of things into the actions we're taking that we may not realize yeah. are going to alter the experience in the future from being a positive one. So a live example could be something like, hey, where I am isn't working for me. Let's say it's a job. So if I find another job, that might be better because I'll be curing the gap, the pain that I'm feeling. And maybe that pain can be showing up as a micromanaging manager. Maybe that pain could be showing up as work that's not really fulfilling anymore, or maybe it's overstress or overpressure. But the thing to know is this, you can change a job very easily. You, you can find somewhere else to work. But if you're not looking at yourself in an internal way, then you carry yourself into this new experience. And yeah. that can create the exact same reality as the reality in which you're trying to get away from today. And that I'm sure you see this as well, Catherine, in your work. Yeah, well, this is like the classic falling off the bandwagon, right? That people who are in discomfort, for example, in their health, they're like, you know what, I'm not feeling well, my energy is low, I feel sluggish all the time, I need to make a change. This is 
where they jump into action is they get a gym membership, they hire a trainer, you know, they find a functional nutritionist, they start changing their nutrition habits, they get fully into action, not really discovering what do they actually need to get the results that they want? What are the challenges that have constantly looped them back to be in the exact same situation that they're in? Like you said, we can run away from that initial discomfort, but if you don't get really clear on what it is that is required to move you out of what you need, what you need to get out of that pain permanently, then you're missing the mark, unfortunately. And that's why we really wanted to drive this home to you guys because this is a big piece that we often see. And this is why coaches or mentors like us can really help put some light on the blind spots that you have, right? This is often what we see is a missing piece when people come and be like, oh my God, I've done it 500 times. I don't understand. I've had the new job. I've done the gym membership. I've had the trainer. I've done Jenny Craig. I've done that, all the things. <laughs> They feel like they're constantly stuck. It is often because they've never taken the time to really discover what is it that I need? What is important to me? What is my why of changing? Because what Betty does down the street is not necessarily what you need. That's a really good point. And then the other thing, I mean, we've been going back and forth on this, like Catherine said, for a little while. And one of the things that we were really connected on was this idea that, you know, we seem to think that because we have been with ourselves our whole life, that that gives us rite of passage to know everything about ourselves. Right. But here's the trick about us humans. Here's the trick about me <laughs> as a human having this experience too. We know what we know that's based on our conscious preview, but we don't know what we don't know that's at a lower level of our awareness. So there could be a lot of things that the relationship is trying to teach you about who you are in the process of your becoming or your of your evolving that you just don't have the lens on. And yeah. sometimes it can be really helpful to be challenged in that way because what other people can see sometimes are things that we can't see. And that's why we kind of need each other on this journey. It's like, we were talking about trail running today for some reason. And, you know, nobody would get into really challenging terrain, drop themselves in the middle of it without any help or without any guidance or without a Sherpa or without trying to understand the terrain first. And if they did, they'd be putting themselves in a pretty dangerous situation. So it would be of no surprise if anything happened that, you know, that it was probably likely that they were not setting themselves up for success, you know? But we drop ourselves into our life situations and we're like, you know what? We're gonna figure this out. And then when it doesn't work, we beat ourselves up about it saying that there's something wrong with us that we right. just don't know the way. Um, so this whole idea of the layers of self is a really, really important one for us all to get. There's no shame in this part of the sequence because we aren't designed to know what we aren't designed to know. That's just the way we work. For us to get a full, well-rounded view of self, you need to put yourself into environments that give you that. <laughs> so it's just this constant quest of understanding and going inward, know thyself. It is one of the most critical areas when we're trying to identify where we're gonna go next or what our next is gonna be. Another example of this I find quite often are people who don't know what their passions are. And they're like, I've tried this over and over and over again and I just keep getting stuck. Maybe I don't have a passion, <laughs> right? Well, not necessarily. It just means that you haven't put yourself in all of these different environments to really have an idea of what that is. And the thing with understanding ourselves, we can't just sit and think about it. It's not a thinking process. It is a feeling experiential process. Mm. So if we don't get a chance to go on that journey, then of course we're gonna come up with a little bit of blanks. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, in the health and fitness space, it is very, very similar, right? People, I mean, I specialize in supporting high-performing women. And often when we get into our late 30s, 40s, and 50s, many people throw in the towel and say, Well, it's just my hormones, mm. right? Or it's just life is busy, right? For for the men that I coach, you know, life is busy. I'm, you know, 
you know, running companies or managing people or all the things, right? But what we need to discover is, you know, what are the narratives we actually live into? This is why I do so much mindset work with what I do, because we have a lot of conditions in our lives, these habits that pull us back. And then we automatically say, see, that didn't work. You know, it doesn't work for me. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I see that a lot yeah. too. I mean, like I do that too, to be honest, but, yeah. <laughs> but you've got to, you've got to like cut yourself and, and try 100%. to ask the deeper questions. Cause the other thing that I've learned about being busy as well is that it's true. We can go through phases in life where there's a lot of things happening and we have yeah. to throw our attention into those things in order to accomplish those things. Yeah. But remember that life will train your neurology. So if we stay in the narrative of being busy, that's a relationship that you're developing, a relationship that you're developing with self, a relationship that you're developing with work. And that gets more muscles stacked onto it the more you practice being busy. And oftentimes we're busy for a lot of different reasons, least of all that there are yes. things to be busy for. Sometimes it can be avoidance, avoiding just sitting with yourself and going through discovery because sometimes that can be painful and uncomfortable too. So it is this knee jerk reaction to move into action, but action doesn't always yield the best result, yeah. not without taking the time to really go inward. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like that really kind of embodies where we start. We start yeah. with trying to dissect and move through the several layers of our mindset, of our heart set, of why we found ourselves in the situation that we found ourselves in. Exploring your part of the ownership of the situation that you're in and yeah. investigating how you want your life to be instead and why it isn't the way that you want it to be instead. And we'd love to know from all of you guys, where do you find yourself in these stages of transformation, right? What is it that you're looking to move through? And what questions are you asking that maybe we can support you in, right? I think that's really important. And I think, you know, like you were saying, Kira, once you are in this discovery and you bring in that awareness, then you can start deciphering and breaking through and refining, right? your capacity and your capabilities with the discovery process, right? Are we ready to move into the second piece? What do you think? I think I think we're good. I think we're ready to move into what's coming next. Do you want to do the introduction? Yeah. So the second layer of this is really discovering and being aware of self-trust. This is something I speak a lot about in the health and fitness space because self-betrayal is one of those things that pulls us right out of transformation and into that realm of like this isn't working for me right completely out of alignment because part of self-mastery and self-trust is honoring your world word with yourself right yeah. mm -hmm. and increasing this capacity for us to stick with what we say, right? We are excellent at holding our word to our bosses, our work, our partners, our kids, if we have kids, our friends, you know, even the barista down the street, I'll be right back. I have 10 cents in my car. You know what I mean? Like we are high integrity individuals. And then when it comes to us, we put ourselves at the bottom of the totem pole. And oftentimes in discovery, especially if you're looking to get unstuck, I know you don't love that word, but to get past something when you're looking to transform or shift or make a change because you're in such discomfort, it really requires this, this practice of learning to trust yourself again. Yes. And this is a capacity thing. This is literally, right, like in the health space, this is, you know, lining up your vitamins for the week, lining up your meal prepping on a Sunday, you know, 
booking in your workouts and then all of a sudden Monday comes, you forget your lunch on the counter, you know, you blow off that workout, workout with your friend, you know, you wake up a Tuesday morning and it was, you slept in and you're like, screw it. I'm not going to go to the gym. You bring your lunch to work Tuesday when you don't eat it because someone ordered pizza. And when you constantly say, I'll do it again, this is how excuses live, right? It's probably very similar in the business space. But when you keep buying into those excuses and you keep letting yourself down, even though it feels like a small thing, this is almost this, you, you, you would never trust a partner if they kept saying to you, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to meet you there. And you're like, but you keep not showing up. Right. <laughs> right. And so the body know, takes no. all, the body takes all of these messages in the same keeps way. Score. It keeps yeah. the score. It keeps track of how many promises we give to it. And we don't follow through. Follow through is the first indicator that a self-betrayal or not following tr tr through is a good indicator of, again, self-betrayal. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that shows up inside of our work and our relationship with work and our relationship with our passions is, let's say, for example, you put your dream on the back burner and you're like, one more year, or let me just do this first. Let me make the money so that I can do this in the background. And then somewhere along the lines, you forget that that was the plan and you just keep making the money and then life happens and you start mm -hmm. stacking responsibilities that make you stay put in the relationship that you are defining. Mm -hmm. Your body knows that. You can't trick yourself. You may think you can, but you can't. So it keeps saying, oh, okay, I understand. This is more important than me, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is more important than me, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. You do that enough times and your body's gonna wanna break up with you. Yes. And it's it's gonna wanna break up with you in the most inconvenient time, in the most inconvenient of ways. Yes. So you're gonna wanna be very hyper conscious of where it is you're saying, well, you know what? Let's just put this aside for now and we'll do this instead. Let's just put this aside for now. Let's do this instead. And kind of really consciously keep track of that and see and it doesn't mean it's not even asking you for a really big commitment for you to take a big leap and risk your whole life it's not asking for that mm -hmm. it's asking for just a piece of your time every day yeah. really and you know one of the things that Kira and I spoke about is how this shows up in the workplace or in our health space right? In the workplace, this is very much like burnout, but in the health space, it's very similar, right? One of the things with, so I'm in the midst of a six month functional nutrition course. And, you know, I've had many nutrition certifications throughout the last 20 years that I've been in the fitness industry, but this one has been quite special because it really is not only functional nutrition, but it's a metabolic specialization. And one of the things that is getting more and more clear to me is our behaviors that lead our thoughts and our actions, our beliefs and our emotions impact how our systems in our physiology process, Absolutely. right? And one of the things with self-betrayal that we, we just put to the wayside, especially if we have this tendency to be perfectionist or have a people pleaser or constantly put ourselves on the back burner, actually impacts your nervous system. And this impact of this self-betrayal becomes this perceived stress in your subconscious, even if you don't perceive it as stress. If you're like, oh, it's fine. No big deal. You know, I'd rather do it for them. It's fine. I'll do it for my kid. Whatever the narrative is, it actually can put your system to go hay haywire. Oh, absolutely. In a different yeah. way, right? And the correlation actually is fascinating that that kind of practice of self-betrayal or not being able to trust ourselves has a strong link to autoimmunity. Kind of like you were saying that your, so your body's like, no longer having it, pay yeah. attention, start taking care, right? So it's so interesting that this is so much more guys than the conversation of transformation. Let's find a new career. Let's find our passion. Let's, you know, feel our best in our bodies, it is really the importance of the crux of your health, right? Yeah. And it's it's always been interesting to me how our bodies are like these, I like to call them spiritual instruments. And I don't use the word spiritual lightly. I use it in the way to describe that it's constantly in communication 
with ourselves and with our environments. And so there is no question mark any longer that our environments, whether internal or external, are always predisposing us to a future reality of our sickness or our health. Yep. And so someone once told me that your health is related to you know, the 100,000 decisions you make about it a year. And it's not just one decision, it's not just two decisions, it is all of these micro decisions that we are constantly making. So, you know, I don't know that we can stress this enough, but when we think about being back in integrity with self, we're talking about how can you show up in the way that you are designed to show up such that you can be true to who you are. It's a big conversation right now, this conversation of authenticity. But here's the thing, we can't show up in our truest, most authentic self if we aren't feeling safe enough to do yes. that. Yes. And that's where a lot of masking starts to and happen. Shame. Yes. And shame around it starts to happen. And so that is just another signal that we're telling our bodies. Like, you're not good enough to be seen. You're not good enough to go after the things that you want. You're not good enough to put your health first. You're not good enough to stop smoking. You're not good enough to la, 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 la. Yep. And then we dive into work <laughs> because at work, we feel like we're good enough. We're getting these promotions. We're getting money. We're getting recognition. And so, yep. so then we get pseudo recognized and we're like, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? That's, that's good. I'm good, Kira. Good, Kira. Keep doing that. Kira. <laughs> but our bodies, they're not fooled. No. And this is why there's such an importance of self-compassion and self-acceptance through all of transformation yeah. because there are so many facets of when you're trying to make a change, trying to go for that new job, new promotion, find your dream passion, you know, shift your health, optimize how you feel that there is this discomfort and in this discomfort, we often make ourselves wrong, especially from you guys listening, our high performers. It is really about how do we slow it down, give ourselves some grace, find some compassion in this whole process, and really allow for the ebbs and flow of transformation to happen, would you say? A thousand percent. And I love this comment. Hear yourself to feel yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like the... This whole idea of being able to settle inside of ourselves and then follow through with what that settling in is saying is huge. And there's simple practices. Again, this is not rocking your world. This is not, you know, needing to burn down. And sometimes that's necessary, but it's not always. And I think it's just these fundamental practices and getting back to those practices that helps to employ the permission to do what we're here to do, right? So I think, I think you know, we've covered a lot in this one. Um, yeah. I know that my journey very, very much models this part of it. So it is a big passion of mine um, to get these messages to the world in as many different ways as possible because these, these may seem like things that we can put aside. Yeah, or skip over. So easy, right? It's so easy to say, whatever. Well, what can I do? What yeah. can I do? I've got this, 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 and this. Yes. And I get that. Those are valid. And there's always something we can do. 100%. So, right? So it's it's really this idea of ensuring that we're paying attention to our attention. Yes. And that is always going to be fed back to us through the realities and the experiences that we're having. Yeah. We own that. Yeah. We totally own that. And so I often have this conversation with my clients, and this is going to bring us right into our third point of the evening, that part of these practices in our daily practices of health or fitness, or nutrition, and mindset is really a practice to self-mastery. And I know we spoke about this in our kickoff conversation, and Amber had a lot to say about self-mastery. <laughs> and yeah. I really believe that it's really about how do we empower ourselves 
in a way that we can really feel like we are honing into who we are, like you were saying, right? And this is really like our third point of empowered alignment. How can we take radical ownership for what transformation is for us? How do we take radical ownership for the excuses that in the past perhaps pulled us and kept us stuck? How do we take radical ownership of where we are and where we want to go? Really deciphering what our why in this entire conversation is, how we want to build resiliency, how we are capable to build capacity through all of this, right? Absolutely. And I do want to bring up a conversation on the word stuck. <laughs> yes, please. So, so, so I made a slide for everybody I, about I where Stuck and Kira was like, I don't like that word. It I is very. Like that word. I, I don't. I don't like the word stuck, and I don't like the word stuck not because it's not true, right? There's moments in our life where clearly there's something that we're hitting up against. Yes. And in that hitting up against it, it's either we're spiraling or we're re we're doing a repetitive thing, or we really kind of are in this wobbly stage of not understanding where to go next, right? And we define it as being stuck. But I find stuck to be such a disempowering word. And the key here is like, how do we embody empowerment in our life? And nobody feels empowered feeling stuck, nobody. And nobody feels empowered having to confront that that is a possible reality. And I think something that models our experience a little bit better it's like this, right? Like, let's say we're climbing that mountain. Let's use the mountain analogy. And we're climbing the mountain. It's the first time we're doing something like it. And we realize we're not at a really great part of the mountain. The only problem is there's a whole bunch of shrubs and like cliffs and really deadly things that are around us. <laughs> and we're trying to, in that moment, figure out how do we get from A to B? But there's a whole bunch of things that are blocking our view, and we may not have all the tools in our toolkit to go mm -hmm. from one to another. So the whole journey, by nature, by design, is to is there as a function of bringing things into your awareness to see mm -hmm. how you can go from one to another. That's not stuck. What that is is valid. We don't have all of the things available as we're negotiating the different parts of our life in order to get to the thing that we want to do that may not be in full view yet. Mm -hmm. And and I think that this is a really normal and healthy part of our human development and our human evolution because we all find ourselves in places sometimes that are new and a little bit foreign to us. And we have to try to negotiate our understanding of what that means and our placement inside of it. And then, of course, try to figure out, well, what is the vision? What is the thing that we want to do next? Um, so that's my rant. <laughs> about the word stuck. I, will, I will explore different ways to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> it is not you. It is not you. It is absolutely on me. But but it does lead us into this whole idea of how to get into empowered alignment, because yes. that is the third. So again, if we just kind of recap where we were, first, we started with the layers, right? Going through the discovery process of understanding what's blocking us, what's the condition versus what needs to be reprogrammed, what's the pattern that we keep finding ourselves in that we've got to either evolve or shed, what's the trauma that might be keeping us in a kind of relationship that we don't want to be, and how do we shed that? So that's that's the whole layers. And then yeah. once you once you kind of get through those layers, you start to build a better relationship with self because you start to understand self and the narrative of self and where to go. And then you get to go do these incremental wins that start to build that idea of self-trust. Mm -hmm. And the more you start trusting yourself, the more you start owning the parts of yourself that really feel good to you. And in that, we want and we desire more authenticity because we start to realize, oh shit, this girl Kira ain't that bad. I really like her actually. <laughs> and I want to I wanna kind of shine more of her, right? So that's the kind of idea of when we start to come up against ourselves in the process and in the journey. And we do all of that when we start to see more of ourselves and we start to be more of ourselves and do more of ourselves. What we realize is I want to create a reality that is aligned to this thing that I'm really kind of digging right now yeah. myself. But the beauty about it is it's not just about ourselves. It's about 
how can we perfect this so that we can support this, right? Yes. It's like you said something beautiful on, um, I want to find it here. You said something beautiful on one of our calls. Catherine said, how you lead yourself is how you lead others. Yes. And that just connected with me in such a strong way. Well, I share this often with my clients that it's really about self-leadership. And I've got a little bone to pick with your word perfection because I don't <laughs> believe in perfection. I, I actually know. believe that it's like Kaizen, right? Continuous improvement. That this idea of, you know, practice make perfect. I believe in practice to make progress. It's all about the baby steps. Kind of like the 1% we spoke about episode one, right? Absolutely. It's about how can you lead yourself? Because that's really what impact is. When you can lead yourself and embody that self-discovery, embody that self-mastery, embody that alignment of what feels good for you to be in flow, that's where impact happens because that is most contagious. When you lead yourself, you can lead others in a powerful, powerful Absolutely. way. And right? also, yeah, and, and I'm with you, by the way, on the whole perfect thing, because I used to think about this all the time. I'm like, we live in a static universe or an unstatic universe. Yes. I mean, nothing ever stays the same. Yep. Everything has a shelf life. Everything is in motion. Everything's forming relationships with everything else. And there's stable relationships and unstable relationships and all that kind of stuff. None of that is through the model of perfection. All of it is through the model of relation. And how we can optimize that relation supports our ability to optimize the experience that we're having. And I think that's really where this whole idea of, emp of empowered alignment shapes up because it's really around looking at, well, how can I start to pit all of these pieces together to fundamentally work in a way that my body responds positively to it? I find it to be absolutely beautiful, by the way, that our body always knows before our mind does. It like... It gives us all these signals and it's like, nope, that's not a fit. Nope, that's not a fit. And then we're taught in all of these different vehicles on how to not listen to it or not trust it or, you know, like, give me the data for your gut. A hundred percent. Which I'm not, I, I don't disagree. I really do think that we need, do need data, but I also think it needs to be a balance. And hundred you need to look at both, right? And then the functional nutrition space Yes. Not only do you need the data, but you need to check in with what are the actual physical symptoms or markers or how is somebody feeling, right? Because yeah, it's great to do lab tests and great to, great to do all the gut checks, but how is the human feeling? So there is this symbiotic relationship of the both, right? Mm -hmm. So this conversation was about discovery. Next week, we are jumping into developing. What are the actual steps to move through from discomfort into discovery, into developing this new narrative, this new identity, shedding the old to welcome in the new? Are we in development next week or are we in, is it disengagement? No, we are in we discovery. Are in develop next week. We are in develop next week. Okay. All right. Sure. I thought there was a detach in there. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm. I think that develop is a part, part of detaching, right? It's shedding the old, creating a new narrative in the CBT meets fitness world, creating a new narrative, creating that new identity of who we are wanting to become in Got order for us right. to develop that next level version of ourselves. Nice. Stay nice. tuned, everybody. We will be back with you April the 11th. So in two weeks. Next week, I'm off on my retreat, as you know, Kira. Yeah. And then we are going to be back in this Mastering Impact conversation. It's going to be a juicy one. So make sure you plug it into your calendars mm -hmm. and join us live. Yes. And guys, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in tonight to this conversation to support Stanford. I see you. Good to see you. Ashif, Genius, and all of you. I'm really, really excited about going deeper into these seven principles of 
successful and sustainable transformation. So until, is it April the 11th? April the, April 11th, the 11th, we are wishing you everything good. Passion forward, my friends. Bye for now.